I've been using the Digma Defy again for the last couple of months and it's been really growing on me. My big complaint with the original view was this thumb cluster and being unable to find a good way to make use of them. I'm always frustrated with boards that don't make some consideration for dedicated arrow keys. With the Defy, I would have preferred four keys directly below and in line with the home row for that very purpose. But instead we have this cluster of eight keys on each side, four that use chock switches and four that use MX. So that means with this board and many others, a layer is needed to provide arrow keys in a convenient location. Now ordinarily, on a split keyboard like the Defy, I'd be holding one of the thumb keys in to get access to that layer on the other side. However, having suffered thumb pain when using a keyboard without dedicated arrow keys for significant lengths of time, I've settled on a pattern now that I use that mitigates the use of a thumb key to access those arrows. The way I do that is by having a layer hold on the key below my left index finger, which is the D key in the Colmat layout. And on that layer, I have my arrows in the home row position on the other side. And I find it just as convenient as using a thumb key as I would have done before, um, but I'm using one of my strongest uh, digits on my finger instead. And this has largely saved me from the thumb pain I was getting when using, say, the Corn or a Voyager or anything like that for any significant spell of time. I also find that although not in exactly the same position, I can swap pretty easily between the Voyager and the Defy using the furthest inwards of the MX keys on the thumb cluster as my main thumb key and I have a space on the left one and enter on the right. So switching to the arrows with uh, the index finger on the other side is an improvement and using these keys, and that's what I do most of the time, but it's not perfect. And dedicated arrow keys would still be preferable in occasional situations, and I've now got a backup set of dedicated arrow keys on the Defy using the eight key thumb cluster. Now, it's not a seamless move down to the arrows because I do have to sort of move inwards and, and kind of squidge my fingers in to make use of this inverted T but I do appreciate it all the same. So I have two kinds of mirrored layouts on each hand. One on the right is an inverted arrow cluster for up, down, left, and right, and on the opposite, the left-hand side, is what I set to page up, page down, tab left, and tab right. Now, what I mean by tab right and tab left is for most programs I use, there are tabs. So for example, in Kitty, my uh, terminal of choice, it might be code and documents in Sketch, uh, it might be different um, documents, and obviously the browser is different browser tabs. So while I'm showing you um, the thumb clusters and what I do with them, um, because I gave them such a hard time in the original Defy view, I thought I might as well tell you what I'm actually doing with the rest of them these days. I use Hyper a lot. And you can find one of my other videos where I show you how I make use of Hyper to switch applications quickly, arrange windows and such. But Hyper isn't an actual key. Instead, it's the equivalent of holding down Control, Alt, Super and Shift all at once. And here's the thing. As I record this in October 2024, with the Defy, you still can't have Hyper set as the hold part of a dual use key. Um, where you know you tap a key to get one input and you hold it down to get another. And so that's pretty annoying and means I need another dedicated key for Hyper which I have as the key to the outside of my main thumb key I use on each side. The very inside keys that use the chock switches, I've employed those to the two most essential jobs in any web developer's arsenal, copy and paste. Finally, the outer key on each side I've configured to switch to a layer I almost never actually use, as the device got enough keys that I barely ever need anything that isn't on the base layer. Now you can also see that I'm using a number row here on my base layer and I've come back to that recently having used a layer with a number pad on instead for a spell and all the commonly used symbols for programming across the top instead. So I had brackets, parentheses, plus, minus, all that sort of stuff. However, when I analysed what I was actually typing day to day, I was making far more direct use of the numbers and those symbols um, than the programming symbols. So I have switched back to having a dedicated number key uh, row across the top. And I use those all the time. I use them to switch tabs in Kitty. Um, I can use uh, the tab left and right keys that I've already shown you, but I also have my tab set up in Kitty with these little numbers for the non-active tab and then I can just hold down command and press the number to switch to that tab. Now I know I could have a layer with a number pad layout and each number with a pre-selected modifier key to make that simpler perhaps. I know I could do all this, but I somehow just find it less cognitive load to use the command key on either side of my home row mod and then just use that number to switch to whatever tab I want. And you know, I also like making use of the dollar and the hat signs in Vim to go to the beginning and the end of the line. And having there, them there on those uh, number row keys just makes that a lot easier. I would say, if you travel a lot, the newer deep sleep setting in Bascore is a worthwhile trade-off. The batteries just last loads longer, even with the LEDs on. I set it so the counter starts once the lights go off and then the board goes into deep sleep. Now, the only rub to this is to wake each side up, you have to press one of the alpha keys 
on each side first. So it's kind of like the first one is like shaking the keyboard awake, and then your next inputs are actual inputs of the keyboard. So it's not perfect, but if you're traveling a lot and you, you know, maybe perhaps just like having the lights on on the board whilst you're using it wirelessly, that setting I've found makes the batteries last loads and loads longer. As a kind of weirder side, I'd welcome the possibility of running ZMK or QMK firmware on this DeFi hardware at some point. I just think there's certain things that just fundamentally work better on those uh, firmwares, such as home row mods and things we still don't have on the DeFi, like the aforementioned Hyper on a dual use key, or combos, or tap dance. Now, I've been told in the DeFi Discord that the, the wireless Neuron hardware could support ZMK, and the wired Neuron hardware could certainly support QMK, but writing some firmware for that job is far from an afternoon's work, so I wouldn't hold your breath in that regard but it would be nice to see at some point. I've got Gatron yellow switches in this board, and I love them. If you're unsure which linears to go with if you're ordering a Defy, I can tell you the Gatron yellows I think are a great choice. And as I mentioned in the full review of this board, alongside the Advantage 360 Pro, I think this is the most premium feeling split board I've tried. The connectivity options are second to none and the included palm rest are just make it so comfortable for long periods of typing. So look, I, I liked the Defy a lot before and I did rate it highly, but I couldn't say that I loved it. I appreciated it, I respected it, but I didn't feel it was probably a board for me to use longer term. But as things stand at the minute, things between us are starting to get a little bit more serious. See you again sometime.